So however you design an icon, I put together a couple of these get emoji, I mean these emoji one icons. I put a couple of these icons together, put in a little shadow, there's my icon. Later on we can design an icon that fits more with our app, but let's say this will be this will be good. The idea is it's a square graphic, it's a big size, 512, so that it should then shrink to the different sizes of the devices. It's transparent. We've got the checkerboard here. After we export it, then that'll, that'll become invisible. That'll go away, just like this. Uh, we'll be able to see through it, just like we can see through this icon and this icon. It's not a flat square like that. They need to update their icon. It looks weird. Um, we want a transparent icon. So what comes next is, first at this point, save your work. File save. All of this time we've been in the PSD file, the Photoshop document. This document then has layers and other effects that we can further manipulate if we want to later. We need to export this as a final file, as a, as a complete production-ready file, so that we can use it in our project. File, export, there's different ways to do it. One of the fastest ways I don't trust the quick export paint just yet, so we'll do save for web legacy. Export save for web legacy. What this lets you do is choose different formats of how you're going to save your icon. The documentation tells us under the preset at the top we want a ping 24. <coughs> with transparency. That's the only thing we need to do here. There's a lot of options here. We just need this as a ping 24 transparency. Make this part outside here will be invisible. If we were saving it as other kinds of graphics, it may show up like this. The difference, of course, is a white background. So you'll have this weird white background behind your icon. That's why transparency is important. I'm going to save. I'm going to save this into my uh, flash drive. I'm going to save it in the same folder as where my PSD file is at. Then we'll move it over to our app. But first, uh, I'm saving this into a mobile apps folder where, for this class. I'm just going to save it there. I'll leave it. Then I'll leave that name alone. The same 512 icon doesn't matter just yet. I'm going to save it. So what I've got is I, I did an export. I converted my PSD file into a PNG file, into a ping file. The PSD file won't work in the project. Um, the ping file will. So I'm going to minimize Photoshop for a moment, but did everyone export that? Is everyone able to export their file? <coughs> The way we use this, yes? We just wanted to confirm that when we do this export, it's the preset is ping 24. And it should have transparency. Hmm?
back in a moment. Uh, let me see we saved and then we can save it to song. Right, so at this point uh, I saved the the file and the way we use it, we started to look at that last time. On my flash drive, I've saved the actual finished file right there. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to go into my app, apps, and then the template. We have that res folder that we set up previously. Remember the documentation says the way we add an icon to our project is in a res folder. So if you open that and paste, I put my icon there. Icon was the one from last time, and now this is the one I just made. We have two problems. Uh, well, one problem that can be fixed two ways. Our config XML file says the icon for our app is equal to icon.ping. We just put in our icon and it's called 512-icon. So we have two ways to fix it. How do you think we fix it? Change the name or change the config file, which is the fastest. Change the name of the icon, yeah. I don't want to go off to the config file and open Notepad and type it differently and then save it. We can maybe do it here. But obviously, if we've got an icon called icon.ping, we need to delete that one first. I'm going to have to say goodbye to that icon and use this new icon. You see, conceptually, uh, we have an icon that we designed brand new to replace the old one. We don't need to change any of the code. The code is pointing to this file. What we do need to do is recompile. We need to do either Cordova build, better yet, Cordova run, so we can actually see it. I have a device plugged in. The driver is ready to go. I'm going to do Cordova run Android. You could do Cordova emulate Android if you don't have the device, and you won't be able to really see this if you do Cordova run browser. The browser is not going to show this icon. So I've got my icon that I designed. I exported it as ping24, transparency. I put it into the res folder. The config file is already pointing to it from last time. And now in my command prompt, I need to, I need to go to that folder on my F drive, apps folder, template, cd template, 2017-03-09, Cordova run device, uh, run Android device. Let that go and see if that compiles it, and then you'll be able to see it after you go back to your device. Let's see, did that finish in the brochure?
Well, it's the one that needs that opponent has the red soul. So eventually mine compiled and then it put it onto my device. The app itself still looks exactly the same. We haven't worked with that part yet. We're working with some of the ancillary things. But if I do go to the home screen and then I go to all my apps and I look around and then I look right there and I see a little cat with a, with a top hat. So my icon worked. Um, check on yours. You should see your brand new icon in your apps there. It should be transparent. You should be able to see behind it. And then to further kind of see the effect, depending on your device, you can tap and hold it and move your app to the desktop or whatever this is called. And then I'm seeing my icon now on the actual desktop and behind it I see the wallpaper. So that was the whole point of doing the transparency. So I see that little cat in the background. Question. Thank you. 
All right, so uh, if this worked, the whole point is that we have the knowledge to add uh, icons to our project. So let's move on and, and look a little bit more regarding this. The next part of this concept is the splash screen. Right now, this branding applies to the icon of the project. So within all the list of all my apps, now my app, my template, has a, uh, has a unique icon. And the way we've got it set up in, in uh, config XML is that this icon is used for all devices. The documentation says we could create a special icon for every platform if we wanted. I'll have a cat icon if someone downloads my app on Android. I'll have a dog icon if someone downloads my app in, uh, in iOS. I'll have a bird icon if we want it for Windows. How to do that? Check the documentation which says your config file. You need to put the icon in the proper platform section. So just to remind you very quickly, in the config file, you don't have to look at this, but remember in the config file, we added the icon right there. The icon for all the, for all the operating systems is right here. But if we wanted a certain icon only for Android, we put this line in Android. If we wanted a different icon for a different operating system, we put it in a different platform. So that's the idea. The next thing that I want to do is if uh, we go over to the Cordova documentation, I want to see, well, what do we need to do to add a, a splash screen? Cordova.apache.org. A splash screen is what you often see first as soon as you launch uh, an app. Like, uh, I like using uh, Periscope, uh, that, that uh, video sharing app. And here's on my regular phone, when I launch Periscope, for a moment it shows the Periscope icon and then the app starts. Some of them might have an animation or other things might happen. You know, if I launch uh, <coughs> some other app, I see like a little preview graphic for a moment. That's a splash screen before my app starts. Let's work on that. Let's go to the documentation. Uh, we saw that looking at um, if we're in the developer platforms, where did we see it? Uh, changing icons. Oh, here we go. Customize icons. Uh, it's inside of develop for a platform. We saw here all the information we need for the icon. And then it says. If you want to deal with a splash screen, that's related to a plugin. So the splash screen plugin dock. So on the left side where you've got all your plugins, you've got a, a splash screen plugin. Let's look at that documentation. So the Cordova plugin uh, lets us display or hide a splash screen during application launch. So the way this is going to work is that uh, we need to install the plugin, which is already done. Remember, we did that Cordova plugin add with a huge list of plugins. So that's done. The way that it works, well, this works on basically all the platforms. Sometimes keep an eye on this. It'll say this plugin doesn't work on this device. Like uh, maybe we have a plugin that doesn't work on Android. So either we don't use it or we use an alternative. Then we might see a, a specific uh, information per platform. There are two mechanisms for displaying on screen on iOS, etc. And then it shows legacy images. <laughs> this 
So let's see, this is talking about iOS specific. A lot of information on just the iOS portion. So this is going to work similar to the icons in that we need um, a little bit of code and then an actual graphic. So let's see. There's a spot here. to specify for the various platforms. So very similar to um, to the icons eventually under example configuration. You can jump right to it over here, example. In the top level config file, add configuration elements like those specified. Please notice that the value of source attribute is relative to the project root and not the WW folder. It should have also said that for our icons setup, meaning that res folder is outside of the WWW folder. It should have been, this that it mentioned it here, should have been mentioned on the icon screen. And here you see a representation. Your whole project has a folder of hooks, platforms, plugins, WW, and res, which we made. And then we will need a subfolder of screen, <coughs> and then splash screens for each platform. We could get away pretty well with one icon for all platforms, because all icons are basically square for all platforms. Then we have a bunch of differences for every device. The aspect ratio, the width and the height of this Android phone is different from this iOS phone, which is different from this other Android phone because they're different sizes. So the splash screen has to be accommodated per device. And notice, notice basically here what we need to do is um, uh, target each platform. So you can use any density that exists in the Android project. We've got splash. We've got a, a tag of splash with an attribute of source and a uh, an attribute of density. And here I see eight references <coughs> to splash screens. Why? What does this code say? What can you make out? Yes, we, we kind of know that from icons. What else is besides difference? Portrait and landscape. Do you see over here, there is a port version, a portrait, and a landscape version. So that means that if my user, if the user is holding their device vertically and they launch my app, our, our, lands, our portrait splash screen has a certain design. If they were holding their device uh, landscape and they launch my app, it'll have a landscape design. Now we locked our project to be portrait in the config file. So really for us, we're not going to need to deal with the landscape version of the icon. Just a portrait. And if we wanted to specify all the different versions, uh, we have the high density, low density, medium, and extra high density. We'll see what those actual pixel, pixel values are in a moment. And then we've got iOS. So if we wanted to specify iOS, notice this has got a lot of ones as well for Windows and BlackBerry, not so complex. Besides the actual graphic, then we have a preference 
of a splash screen delay, 10,000 milliseconds. Display that preview splash screen for 10 seconds. That's way too long, but that serves a good purpose. We, we, will, we will see that we will use that delay also to prep the project. Let me see if I can kind of show you here. This is on my phone. I'm going to launch Periscope. You see how it's showing that splash screen and then the actual app loads. If I exit the app and then go do something else and then come back to it, the splash screen might display even less because the app already is loaded in memory. So it needed to display... Oh, look, there's Norman Reedus. He's doing something cool. Oh. But uh, the app didn't need as much time the second time. So with that 10 seconds there, we are making sure that our app loads up behind the scenes, a splash screen is visible to give the people eye candy, then the app is ready. Subsequent times it'll load up faster. So what we're going to do is add a splash screen, have it delay for 10 seconds, and then program it to automatically uh, remove itself once it's no longer ready. Maybe in two seconds. Maybe our phone loads the app in two seconds. Maybe an older phone needs to take eight seconds. So we have a 10 second buffer to display something before the person tries to use our app. So what we'll do is uh, let's copy just basically one thing to start off with. You should see under the example configuration of the splash screen in the section of platform Android we're gonna use the extra high quality we'll start with this one we'll use the extra high quality splash screen portrait port I'm not gonna take the landscape you might use these other three in a moment. We're going to <coughs> copy this and paste it where? In the config XML file in the Android section, yes. So open up your config XML file in Notepad. Go back to your template project, and then we'll do right click, right click Notepad, config XML. And then we will find our section that focuses on Android, our platform of Android, uh, after our line 25, we'll paste. So this is saying, let's load a splash screen from this location, which doesn't exist yet, which is density. We'll go back to the Cordova doc and then also copy the splash screen delay. That is still in this config file after the Android platform, after iOS, after Windows, after Blackberry. There's a line outside of a platform, which means it'll apply to all platforms. This is saying, load your splash screen, whatever it is, but then delay it for 10 seconds. So copy that line. So for all the platforms, it's uh, this all the time. Per platform. If you're going to target BlackBerry, you need its code there. Uh, so we're going to copy this and paste it before the platforms. The example has it after all the platforms, but I don't believe it matters. It hasn't mattered before. So I'm pasting it before the listing of my individual platforms. Preference name, splash screen delay, value 10 seconds. I can set that to 20 seconds, 20,000 milliseconds. I can set it to 1 second, 1,000 seconds. I want a long delay because programmatically, with some code, I want it to detect when is the app ready, hide the splash screen. Save that. Uh, when I've taught this before, we always put the delay first, and it worked just fine. 
in the example of the docs, it's after. So we can try both, but I know that it's worked before by putting it before. Okay, so um, graphic-wise, we, we need to design something in Photoshop or any graphic software and then export it as a ping and then save it in this location which doesn't exist yet. Um, the, the documentation would um, be more complete if it had a list of all possible sizes for each platform. It kind of tells you for some platforms, but not every platform. Uh, for example, Android. It's just saying uh, H, X, H, D, P, I, or whatever. It said somewhere here, go check the Android documentation to find the exact values. But uh, the value, and it's very detailed on the iPhone. Uh, you can tell the bias here. But uh, the, docu the size, basically, that we want for this size is it's HD, 1920 by 1080. So let's go into Photoshop. I'm going to go to File, New. Name, I will call this Splash. I will keep it 1920 Splash. The width will be 1080 and the height 1920. So on, a, on an HD TV, it's 1920 by 1080, 1920 wide, 1080 tall. Well, that's on a landscape view. We want a portrait view. So it's 1080 wide, 1920 tall. Resolution 72, the same. Um, I believe the documentation in there says no transparency. Because if you do leave it with transparency, the odd thing that will happen is your spra splash screen will load up, which will be transparent and actually show your app behind the scenes. We don't want that. So background contents, we have white, background color, we have other, which lets us choose any color. I'm going to be very simple for the moment and just maybe white or gray or something. Later, if we want, we can add a gradient and textures and any crazy thing we want. For the moment, plain white background. So the name, any name, because we're going to need to change it anyway later. The 1920-splash with 1080, 1920, 72, white background. Click OK. You see it's a tall graphic, portrait sized. I'm going to save that. File save as. I'll save it to my flash drive. You don't have to save it into your project folder yet, into the template. I'm saving it into my flash drive, uh, just in any other folder. Whoops, not there. Inside of my flash drive. Make sure it's a PSD file, Photoshop document, PSD. I'm saving it in the same place as my previous icon, the square icon, and there's the splash screen. PSD, save it. We're not going to spend a lot of time at the moment to design an icon. Um, you'll do this later. We're going to have a, a, a homework eventually for this part of the class. We had a homework for part one. We'll need at least one homework for part two. That'll be part of it to actually kind of really design something interesting later. So for the moment, uh, we'll just put some simple text. I'm going to get the text tool. In Photoshop, we have a little T for text. And the size up here, I think we need something pretty big. I think we need like uh, maybe to type uh, 125. This is going to be pretty ugly looking, but I want it functional. My 
template. So with the text tool, any font, you can get creative with a font if you want, doesn't matter. Any size, it looks like 125 point is a pretty good size. And it shows a color. When you type some text, then you have to click the check mark at the top over here to confirm your text. We also have some 3D text effects that you can explore later. So that's it. It's going to be very boring, but I want some graphic for my splash screen. So I'm going to do a regular save. I can come back and continue to edit this however I want later. Next I need to file export, save for web. I'm going to save it as a ping 24 again, but with no transparency. So save for web, and the preset will probably remember itself ping 24 with no transparency. Save. I'm going to save it in the same place um, somewhere in my pro uh, in my flash drive. Uh, we don't have the right folder in the project yet, so I'm just going to save this in my flash drive. The name 1920-splash. Save. So the parts of the code are right here. It says, in your res folder, we'll need a screen folder with an Android folder, and then our project, our ping file. <coughs> so we'll go back to our template project. We need to copy, uh, well, we need to make in the res folder a new folder called screen. And the screen folder in the res folder. And then in the screen folder, we need a folder called Android. And then in the Android folder, this is where we need to put our ping file. So my ping file, I put it over here for a moment. My PSD and my pings are in some other folder. And then I, I'm moving, I'm copying the splash ping into the Android folder, in the screen folder, in the rest folder, in the project. This time we'll do it backwards. Previously, we named the file which was based on what was in the config file. This time, just to do it a little differently, it shouldn't matter, I'm going to name what's in the config file based on what the file name is. My file name is 1920-splash. This is pointing to a file called splash port xhdpi ping. So either name it that or name it there. I'm going to name it here. 
should not matter as long as it's all properly the same name. 1920-splash. Obviously this other part needs to be correct with the name of your actual file. Is, uh, is there. So we've got the graphic design, we put it in the right folder, and we then reference it. Yes, hang on. Do we have to follow that folder or subfolder? This one, I believe you do have to follow somewhere in the documentation. This is the default. You can change this somewhere, but I would use the folder structure the same. You can name the file something different, though. Um, and if for the iOS, if you want to be able Yes. Yes. So I would go back to this level, yeah. create an iOS folder, copy it in there, and then add the splash in the iOS platform yeah. pointing to it. So I think that's all we need. Uh, we can then go back to command prompt and then run it. So give that a try now. Do Cordova run device. So I heard at least one wow, it worked. <laughs> right, let's see on mine. So uh, I'm launching it on my real device. I'm, I like to go to my home screen on my device just to get the full effect. Waiting for it to compile and launching. Here it comes. So it's launching up here. My template. So then if I wait for about 10 seconds, 10 seconds, it's done. And then my app starts. Cordova run browser. I'm going to try this in the browser. Just out of curiosity to see how it looks in the browser. So in the browser... I think I saw that it said in the documentation the browser behaves differently, so if it behaves differently, it's different. Actually, it's showing like a hidden splash screen. Yeah, look at that. It shows a different splash screen in the browser for 10 seconds, and then it'll show the device ready. There. Browser. Browser quirks. You can use the following preferences in your config. So if we're going to deal with a browser, it has its own platform name browser. So that took 10 seconds. It was way too long. We'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break to see if everyone's working. That 10 seconds there is artificial to force it. If I if I go to the home screen and I launch my app again, well it's already in memory. What I have to do is force quit. And if I view all my apps and then quit it, I'll be able to see the result again of the of the splash screen. So these 10 seconds, we can change the 10 seconds so that it's only what we need. This is the screen, this is the code here. 
we have navigator.splashscreen.hide. This will hide a splash screen. If there's a splash screen visible, this JavaScript command will hide a splash screen. Well, our basic template has some JavaScript where it checks device ready. When device ready fires, our app is ready. So our logic is that when the device ready um, when the device ready uh, event fires, we want to run that command and it'll hide the splash screen, whether it was two seconds or ten seconds later. So I'm going to copy navigator.splashscreen.hide. This is inside of the section right down here, splash screen hide. So we want that line of code, navigator.splashscreen.hide. What we'll do now is we will open the the JavaScript file in our project in the WW folder. So you see we've got the actual graphic of the splash screen in its own folder in the res folder. We've got the reference to the splash screen in the config file and then to control it to hide it as necessary inside the WW folder inside the JS folder. Let's right-click to edit the index.js file. Edit with Notepad. We're going to get much more familiar with this eventually. So this is saying um, initialization is happening, waiting for a device ready. The app itself, the Cordova construct at a certain point will emit an event device ready. We have the event of a click. We had on click. Remember that? Document dot get element by ID dot on click. When we click something, the event of on click was emitted. It was then captured by our function which did something. So there's an emission of device ready, which does the rest of the stuff. And basically here, once the app is ready, once we've gotten the received event, do the rest of the app. So anywhere inside of re received event is where we're going to paste this code. I'm going to say we will paste it right as soon as the received event function is is called. So at this moment we'll say everything about our project is ready, hide the splash screen, show the rest. Save that. To get the full effect before running it, you want to force quit the app. Don't just go to the home screen because it's still in the memory. On, on an Android device, you can press the, uh, the icon, I think on your tablets, on the rightmost icon that shows you a list of all of your running apps. Force quit the app. It's no longer in memory. On your tablet, you're going to have a button to show you all your running apps, probably an icon with a bunch of little squares. And then when you see it, quit it. So I know I've quit it. I know it's not in the memory anymore. Now I'm going to go to the Cordova Run device so that it loads a new copy of it in memory. And you saw a moment ago, for me and probably yourself, it took 10 whole seconds. This time I'm going to count it down and let's see how faster it happens. So we'll start counting one. There we go. So one second. It only needed one second to load the app. That's the whole point of this. The app is initializing. Once it's ready, hide the splash screen. We don't need it for those whole 10 seconds. It's a very simple app, so in one second it loads. Once we uh, make it more complex with more graphics, more functionality, etc. It may take three seconds. Hopefully it doesn't take 10 seconds, but we have that buffer of 10 seconds just in case. To be even more secure, we could put 30 second pause just in case it's a really old device. 
and then it needed 13 seconds to load up, this will automatically choose the right amount of time and then hide the splash screen. Yes? Why can't we do a JavaScript versus doing this in It's just the way Cordova is set up. This is a JavaScript command, so we write it in the JavaScript file. The con Possibly. Um, where is it at? Well, I wouldn't quite trust it because I don't know how long auto is. We can test it and um, see if that might work better and keep it all in one file. Sure. But um, there's multiple ways to do the same thing. It will it will hide it before the time is up. We have ten seconds just in case. It just the 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 class is still passing, but the the file is the file is still running. That's a good point. I don't know if it's still running in the background. Maybe, uh, and this might just hide it, or maybe remove it as well. That's a good point. I'm, I'm not quite sure if it does that, but anyway, ten seconds later, it will be gone anyway, too. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure if it simply hides it visually or actually kind of quote unquote removes it from memory or whatever. But I trust it. So at this point, uh, I've got a splash screen that closes after the, uh, the proper amount of time. A very ugly splash screen. But you'll be able to design a better splash screen later. Let's take uh, one more break, and then we'll see what else we can do. So it's uh, 8.30. We'll take a break till 8.40, and then we'll go on.